Hello everyone, this is In Game Arts with another boxing, another offline product gaming review. This is Torok for the Nintendo Switch. Now this is a limit run physical copy, so getting a copy will not be the easiest. To jump right into it, this physical copy came with the update version 2.0.1b already on the cartridge, and thankfully there were no updates available since the time of making this video. So this physical copy from Limit Run of Torok is the most updated version of the game. Now this is Torok, the original N64 version, or Nintendo 64 version, it's just been remastered by Night Dive Studios. They just basically remastered the game, give it full HD graphic style, updated the controls to be more ease of life, added a little bit a few more settings, so on and so forth. Just overall, just maybe overall, but game a better port over and remastered the game. Overall, an HD remaster, I mean, what you come to expect, but done very well. They don't ultimately change or censor or get rid of what was originally there, which was a good, solid game. And just keep the game original as close as it can be, but make the game fun and just a little bit more approachable for the nowadays audience. Like so forth, you can use like the Pro Controller or uh, the regular handheld mode for the game and use two joysticks to play like a normal FPS, where you can use one joystick to control the character and the other joystick to change the camera. Instead of like in the old N64 version, you had to use name that one joystick atrocious thing. I have always hated the Nintendo 64 controller, but going into this, this was actually the very first time I actually sat down and played the original first Torok. Now, I did play it when I first got this limit run version for a little bit just to test the waters of it, but the only one I have massive history and nostalgic for is Torok 2 Seeds of Evil, because a friend of mine had a Nintendo 64 of that game, and just so that's why I started with that one first, because of the history I have with that game. But I did want to play the original first one. And it's what you come to expect of a first one going into like a sequel of Torok 2. 
named Torok is kind of like the blueprint, the idea. You can see where how Torok 2 just improved upon everything that was bad and from the first one. Well, the first one has some hindrance in there. Like, graphically, it's not necessarily a bad looking game, but you see a lot of use, reused assets. The environments do get repetitive. Gameplay wise, it doesn't have the ease of life of certain things you expect from like Torok 2, like changing ammo type, and as well as navigating your weaponry. It doesn't have the circle wide out. You have to navigate every single gun in a row. Just certain things like that that can be tedious that the second one approved upon. And that's what you kind of expect. Now one of the things that make the original first one a little bit more cumbersome and tedious compared to the second one, well, they, the second one did have some frustrating levels like Lair of the Blind ones. The first one here, uh, oddly, the second one, I know I keep jumping around them, but I want to emphasize the difference between them. The second one has enemies, but ammo that re can respawn, so you can constantly at least have ammo ready. What makes the first one more tedious and hard is that ammo doesn't respawn in certain areas, but enemies respawn in certain areas. So it makes it a little harder to explore and look around, because enemies are going to constantly respawn around you. As, but you don't get ammo respawn, so you're working with limited ammo, as well as that ammo doesn't seem ultimately as given to you as much as like the second one does. I, I know I'm talking about them both, but it's very noticeable how much the first one was like a blueprint, the first idea, the first iteration of, that they were going to go with, then they jump to the second one and they just approve upon it. Think of like, like Resident Evil 1 to jump into Resident Evil 2 or even 3 where they just massively approve upon what was established from the first game. I'm not saying the first one's bad, much like Resident Evil 1. It's not necessarily a bad game. It's just you got to approach it that way that you got to know that this was the blueprint. And there's not much of a story or anything like that, but the gameplay is still there. It still functions. They got some hidden little areas here and there, and they secret little weapons and stuff, so on, as well as got some neat guns. Though the balancing in the game and this one in terms of weapons seem a little bit better, honestly, than the second one. While the second one you just constantly use a explosive shotgun, well, you do use the explosive shotgun in this one a lot. It's very powerful. But some of the other weapons seem a lot more useful. Like, where in the f second one, you have to constantly try to make sure to aim for the head to get an instant head headshot because you have to be... Or they're just a bullet sponge otherwise. The first one here, they're all kind of bullet sponge. So you just kind of just use every gun and just unload on every single person you see. So it just felt a little bit more fun jumbling between the guns than trying to hone one gun. But there was still just better guns out there, like the rocket launcher and the the uh, three round burst rifle and then explosive shotgun shells. It's just it's a nice little iteration. I did enjoy the game, but I did find myself getting a little bit more te uh, cumbersome and tedious from the experience compared to the second one, just because of the enemies respawning. Uh, then parts of me wish they may would have fixed that night dive done would have, because like I said, it does it is tedious. But parts of me am glad that they left it in there because that's the original experience and you should not tamper with the original experience when you're remastering. You can improve upon it, but don't completely censor, alter, or remove what was the core mechanic of the game. Now, you could have probably had an options menu to disable or enable the enemy respawn function just so you can maybe explore the level, levels a little bit better so you can enjoy the level design and so on. But overall, I still had a good time. I, I was really glad to actually sit down and play this game. I said I was I didn't know if I was going to jump into it, but after playing the, the second one first, I figured, no, you know, I'm going to jump into the first one. Check it out, see what it is. I expected it to be a little bit shorter, and it was than the first, second one, so I kind of breezed right through it. I didn't ultimately felt like myself this was like an awesome experience compared to the second one, but I think it's still an interesting game to have on your shelf. It's not one you would go out of your way to hunt for, because you really don't need to worry about... Um, uh, story-wise, like if you don't play the first one, you won't understand the second one. They don't really tie together very much, so you don't have to worry about it. Look at Torok and Torok 2 Seeds of Evil as somewhat their own standalone games, almost, because they don't really st stick together in terms of chronological order or anything like that, and story-wise. So, if let's say they're both outrageously expensive on eBay, I recommend Seeds of Evil 2 compared to the first one, but if you're a complete collector like I am, you're going to want both. As well as that, to include that the bonus little box thing is a bonus sleeve thing if you bought both of the both of the games together from Limit Run Games. It's not required or a part of the collection, but if they, they did do a separate like collection thing, and there are physical copies without the slot, uh, slip slide for both games. So 
main, whether you're a complete collector, you keep that in mind. It's not part of the collection, but there were some copies sold with the slip cover, so keep that in mind. Now, overall experience, I didn't have any issues. I did experience some minor frame rate drops. I did notice it a little bit more in the first one here than in the second one, but I don't really, it wasn't that big of a deal. But that was the only really noticeable problem I had complaining the game. As I said, there was no update, so it's the fullest updated version of the game. I, it played great, it worked great. I overall enjoyed my experience with it. As I said, I recommend the second one more than the first one, but if you want to pick it up, I do recommend it still. It's still a fun, classic FPS game. It was enjoyable, I'm glad I played it, and I know the PS4 version will be coming out here a little bit from Limit Run Games. Gladly run through it again. I don't know if I'll play it on the higher difficulty, because like I said, this, the first one here was way more tedious than the second one in certain areas. So, in my opinion, look into it, definitely. Or just go in the second one, or maybe pick it up on Steam, see what you think of it before you spend 960 to 70 depending on whatever they're selling it on eBay right now for physical copies. So, thank you all for watching. I'll try to leave links down in the description if you're an instant copy. And I'll see you guys in the next unboxing video. Bye-bye!